Focus brought to you by IG. Really interesting show we have here today because we're kicking off the quiet period for the next FOMC. And that might sound kind of boring, but it's actually been a hell of a kickoff, Paul, because we had Fed Chair Powell speak. We had a bunch of other central bankers speak. They all wanted to get their last notes in here before we hit this uh, around two week quiet period leading into November 1, the next uh, FOMC meeting. And so I thought, what better time to have you on decipher what we're hearing from central bankers and do a little preview of what to expect from Fed Chair Powell at the next uh, FOMC? Because it's not looking like they're going to necessarily change interest rates, but what they say will be really important, right? Yes, that's exactly. I mean, what we've got over the last, I mean, we've been, I think, two weeks into Fed speakers talking for a variety of views. Really, they seem to all be looking at the Treasury yield market, um, seeing that uptick as that's also going to affect their policy. But Fed Chair Paul didn't seem to share that sentiment today. He really talked about inflation. He kept to his data-dependent kind of idea that he's been pitching all along. So he hasn't changed. He actually sounded more hawkish today than I think he has in a while, but I, it's, it was I, interesting. I would tend to agree with you. And, and great point right off the bat, and it's worth highlighting for a lot of people at home who don't, don't maybe understand the dynamics here, just to hammer home once again, Fed Chair Powell and the Fed control overnight interest rates, okay? And, and now, of course, that influences interest rates from treasury yields to mortgage rates to everything. It influences everything. But they don't control treasury yields. They influence them with their policy. They don't control them. And so to your point, Paul, there's been a lot of central bankers recently who are very focused on this number that they do not control, which is the 10-year yield that's right there on the doorstep of 5% for the first time since 2007. And a lot of these central bankers, Paul, are worried that have we gone too far? Do we need to look at interest rate cuts to try to bring these yields lower? Because again, the 10-year yield, which they don't control, is a huge benchmark for mortgages, for car loans, and everything else. And so they're worried that they've gone too far and will maybe tank those markets, um, but they can't control that. And to your point, Powell, and we'll get to his statement in just a second, he has been as firm as you can be in that I'm looking at inflation, I'm looking at employment, and I'm controlling the short-term interest rate, and I have my blinders on it. I mean, even his he's asked about the war in the Middle East, and he's like, that's terrible. If it gets you know more widespread, we're going to have to worry about it. But he is focused on inflation, um, which has made the FOMC meetings a little bit boring in terms of action. By the time we get there, it's pretty priced in what they're going to do. But thankfully, there's still the big indecisive piece right now, my friends, is will they hike another time or are they done? And Fed Chair Powell has not said that they're done, but he also hasn't necessarily said we're, we've are we got at least one more hike on the table. He hasn't said that. And so we have here, Paul, in November, 0% chance of another hike for that meeting. But what he says at that meeting will push the December meeting closer to hike or not hike because it's not 50-50, but it's 70-30, which is more than a lot of people would expect. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's he's looking at the inflation numbers, really. I mean, it's, he's like he's seeing a strong economy. The GDP numbers, even even earnings, if you want to go even as granular to the micro level, have been pretty good so far. So the, the underlying economy is doing well. Where you're starting to see people get worried is what, what does that 5% mean for housing? What does that mean for big parts of the economy? And, you know, even automotive sales and yeah. sort of things like that. Um, but he's looking at inflation and he's not necessarily seeing the slowdown in inflation that we got over the summer. He actually mentioned this in the speeches that he saw some slowdown in inflation over the summer, but it's actually picked back up in September. You know, as people, the demand side of things is strong. People are employed. We haven't really seen the job market change yet, which is he's what he's saying. So that's where you're starting to create this chance of another hike is starting to creep up and it has been creeping up over the probably the last month or so here so that's something to keep in mind it's and 
I mean, the FX moves have been all over the place, kind of back and forth within 50 points today. So Yeah, and you and I were talking before the show because the, the yield curve is so weird right now, and, and it's pushing and pulling on Forex markets in a really interesting way for short term trading because it's I mean we, we saw today around his statement we saw you know 60 pips higher in euro back to unchanged and then close the day higher um, so big moves but a lot of it is confusion around like I say this this weirdness whereby are, are interest rates moving higher or are they not in the short term they're not moving that much higher um, to your point, they have moved a little bit higher. Those odds, for example, have gone from around like 10 to 20 percent to up to 40 percent this week. Right now, splitting the difference around 30 percent. So an indication of short term rates edging higher. And you can see here since July, the one month, pretty much the shortest Treasury uh, yield has gone from 5.3 percent to 5.6 percent. But what's really moved is that 10 year and that 30 year going from the mid three handle there to both sitting around 5%. So in the same time that short term rates have edged higher by 20, 30 basis points, longer term rates have moved higher by 150 basis points almost. Um, and so with that, you're getting this Forex market that is like, is this dollar strength? Or is this normalization in their curve and like an unchanged dollar maybe undo some of the dollar strength because rates aren't necessarily screaming higher, Paul? They're, if anything, just kind of normalizing, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you have to remember that Forex is a spot market. So it's going to really take into account those short term interest rates over the long. Um, so that's kind of the push and pull. Um, and then when you have Paul talking about possible higher inflation, which means probably another rate hike, then you, you get the dollar strength there. So it's it's that push and pull that you're getting. You're basically getting a yield curve that's getting back to normal. It hasn't been normal for now almost, I don't even know how long we're in, uh, over Almost year, two years, almost yeah. Almost two years of an inverted yield curve. So now we're getting back to the normal yield curve, but we also could have the the front end of the yield curve or the short end of the yield curve actually still go higher, which is the, basically the uncertainty and what happens. It's how you get the volatility, how you get the back and forth. It makes it very interesting if you're an intraday trader, but that's that's kind of what we're getting. Yeah, because yields have broadly moved higher. And here you have the 10 year over the course of the last 10 years plus, and you have it overlaid with that dollar yen market. And you can see both of them have broadly moved higher, especially if you close uh, off anything prior to the middle part of 2020. It has been a straight shot higher almost, aside from some volatility at the end of last year, start of this year, we saw some dollar weakness in, in different periods. But highs in yields, highs in dollar. But to your point exactly, yields aren't necessarily screaming higher in the short term and not affecting that spot market that Forex traders are looking at, um, even though yields are moving so much higher in the long term. And we're seeing this normalization. It, it almost kind of is that soft landing, so to speak, because the alternative, of course, Paul, is how else do we get a normal yield curve if long term interest rates aren't going to move higher? Well, short term interest rates are going to have to crash lower, right? Mm -hmm. And and to get that, you usually have to see a stock market crash. So really interesting times, weird times right now where you're seeing this strength in yields and dollar. But it, it it's not to the same extent you would almost expect to see, especially with that leg higher that you've seen in recent trade, that blue line yields really taking a leg higher in the 10 and 30 year duration. Dollars not seeing those new highs from last year. The the tell will be if there is another rate hike from Fed Chair Powell uh, either this year or start of next year. Because yeah, here was the exact words from him, which again were just he's he's a master at being a hawk and a dove at the same time. But I think to your point, I, the market translated it, I think, as hawkish. This was just 30 minutes later, but by the end of the day, the stock market much lower, interest rates much higher, um, and uh, dollar a little bit of a mixed bag. But uh, maybe you can speak to a little bit of his uh, statement here, the last statement that we're going to get before November, especially that piece of they're seeing the downward pressure on inflation, Paul, 
but he's not saying that they feel great about it. They're not saying that they're done by any means. Yeah, they're in a very, and he uses the word uncertainties, and that's probably the best word to characterize kind of the times right now in, in the economy. I mean, you have every sort of different risk that you could think of between war in the Middle East, the war in Ukraine, Russia, higher oil prices. I mean, there's there's a lot going on, a slowing housing market right now by the looks of it. The data that's been coming out in housing hasn't been necessarily good. So they're very hesitant to go too far. Because historically, the Fed has gone too far. And when they got, go too far, typically, it, they, they hurt the economy pretty badly. So they're kind of aware of that, but they're also aware that inflation might not be done. We, we might have more of it in it could be not even demand side inflation, could just be the supply side inflation of everything else that's going on in the world. No, that's a great place to leave it because I, I think it so well embodies the two things that we're looking for clarification from Fed Chair Powell on is are the geopolitical risks that we're seeing, not only in the Middle East war, of course, but also before that, there was all of the economic slowdown in Asia and parts of Europe is he going to start to turn over to that piece and be like, we're holding rates, we're worried maybe we went, you won't say we're worried we went too far, but will he at least allude to something like that at this November meeting? Or will he still be laser focused on inflation? Because even if he doesn't say any, they don't hike, they don't do anything, but he reiterates that they're watching inflation and he doesn't say anything uh, to the dovish side of things, but even maybe we're watching that geopolitical risk because energy prices are, high, are are getting up again, then that might be a case for traders to take this to another rate hike. But yeah, great point, Paul. It's, it's every market's on edge between these two sides of, of how Powell can come out at this next FOMC. It's going to be really interesting.